Hey guys, Chaps here, and welcome to day 4 of this Horde Feedback mini-series. With today's video, I start to focus down more on a few of the controversial topics and give my thoughts on them. Today, we'll be covering the power tap system and bonus objectives. We'll then finish off by discussing perks. As always, be sure to like and subscribe, but for now, let's hop to it. Alrighty, power taps. As I've said before, on paper, they're not a bad idea. In practice though, it falls a bit short. Taps are intended to reward players for defending different portions of the map. As more appear, they should also encourage players to expand their base. That's a cool concept, but the benefit just isn't there. The taps just don't provide enough incentive to encourage players to leave the comfort of what they know and love. I do have a proposal for an alternative though. Right now, we have an issue where the taps are RNG based. If it's in a good location, people might care about it. If it's not though, the taps are largely ignored. My solution would be that after each boss wave, all of the remaining tap locations become rings, and then the team could capture one of them, and the rest of the rings go away. So basically, they all come in, and the team can just select which one they want. With this, we still have the preset tap locations, and we still get one after each boss wave. But by letting the player select which one they want to activate, more people will utilize them. If I'm camping at spawn and foundation, and the tap spawns in the middle, I'm just going to ignore it. Taps will then start to spawn adjacent to it, and may or may not come towards my base. There's a pretty good chance that I'm not going to be utilizing most, if any, of the power taps. If instead I was able to choose, oh hey, I want this tap to spawn, then bam, I'm using one. After the next boss wave, all of the other rings would spawn, and maybe this time I'll choose this tap. There, now I have two taps, and I'm expanding. Instead of just ignoring them, I'm starting to utilize them, and they're providing incentive for me to expand my base, but it's in a way that I can control. Yes, this definitely makes taps a bit easier, so maybe they'd be worth a little bit less, but at least they're being utilized now. I also feel that a more central tap, like maybe the one right in the middle of foundation, maybe should be worth some more energy. And maybe central isn't exactly the right variable to be looking at, but it's something that I think TC could look at each of the power taps and determine which ones they think are easier or harder to hold off, and just make the harder ones worth more energy. So yeah, I do feel that power taps are, in general, a good thing to add to the game. Necessary? Not really. But overall, they're not a bad idea. I just feel that they could be improved upon. If you think about it, the power taps are really just an incentive to make people do something that they wouldn't naturally do. They're basically a bonus objective. Unfortunately, they suffer from the same downfalls as Gears 4's bonus objectives, they just aren't rewarding enough. Personally, I'd like to see more varied objectives. Drop a man turret on the map. If it survives, you get to keep it. If it dies, it's gone. This provides more incentive because it rewards you with a valuable fortification. Imagine if three light mass bombs spawned in escalation rings on the map. Capture the ring to defuse the bomb. Each bomb will detonate after three minutes or when the round ends. For each that you don't deactivate, all of your fortifications lose one third of their health. Contrary to the dropping a turret on the map one, this provides incentive because it punishes you if you fail. This could also lead to some new modifiers, like require all bonus objectives. Like if you're playing and an objective appears, you must complete it, or else you fail the wave. I'm not too bothered by the fact that TC removed the bonus objectives from the game, as they were largely underutilized. But that said, I had hoped that they would expand upon them rather than completely eliminate them. Let's switch topics now to talk perks. Man oh man, this got a lot of responses the other day when I made that Reddit thread. I'm going to start off by saying that they are next to pointless once you get past level 1 or 2 of them, and I'm also going to say that I don't really like that it tells you what you're buying, but it doesn't really tell you what you have. Like, if I see I can get 16% damage boost for 5000 energy, um, made up number by the way. But anyways, that might seem enticing. However, if I saw that it was actually, I can go from 15% to 16% damage boost for 5000 energy, then yeah, that's a lot less enticing. So let's think about why we have perks in the first place. Part of it is probably to help the player out. As the waves go on, the enemies get stronger. So these perks give us a little boost. The other part is that it will add some dynamic that changes each match. When it comes to giving us boost, I'd almost say why even bother. The whole point is that enemies get stronger and stronger as the rounds go on, so why do we need something to counter that? Okay, and then we look at the dynamic aspect, and you can spec what you want to upgrade in the order that you want to upgrade, and you know, it adds variety and a deeper meta. Well, 
I mean, not really. People know how to play. From what I've seen, the perks aren't really affecting the playstyle at all. They're doing the same order almost every time, and honestly, the perks just seem pointless. To be completely honest, it appears to me that it's just a mirror of what other hero shooters do. I'll take Paladins, for example, which, by the way, is a really fun game. As you progress within a match, you earn these points. You can then spend these points to upgrade your perks. I imagine many other hero shooters have a similar mechanic, and it honestly feels like the Coalition saw this in some hero shooters and said, Oh, we're trying to do a hero thing, maybe we should do this as well. To me, it just feels pointless and like it was added for the sake of adding something. I'd say that at its core, there's two main issues that people have with perks. One, they're pretty weak when you consider how much they cost. And two, people are selfish, and this gives them a reason to act on it. On number one, it almost relates to the law of diminishing returns. This is a simple plot, but it gets the point across. Let's use Kate's health boost as an example. The first upgrade is totally worth it. It costs 1000 energy and gives you a 10% increase in health. The next upgrade costs 2050 and only adds 3%. This continues where the cost gets greater and greater, and the benefit doesn't really grow. In fact, it actually starts to get smaller. In my opinion, this is an inherent flaw. This basically encourages people to just buy one or two upgrades and then forget about it. In theory, a better system would be to have the lower level perks cost less and the higher level perks add more. It creates a more linear line, or at least one that seems more fair. The trend on this curve would actually encourage the use of high level perks. Oh, and as a side note, not only do the benefits become tiny when compared to the cost, but the benefit is close to unnoticeable. If a 27% health boost isn't going to save you, how likely is it that a 28% boost will? The difference is so small in the grand scheme of things that the change is basically unnoticeable. Beyond all of that though, I think the number 2 point that I mentioned earlier is possibly a bigger issue. The game incentivizes people to be selfish and purchase perks for themselves rather than helping out the team. If I go back into the Paladins analogy, there's a big difference. When you earn points, it's your personal points, there's no sharing them with the team. You don't have to do a trade-off of, do I help myself, or do I help the team? I think this is probably my biggest issue with perks. Well, besides how unnecessary I think they are. I'll say that this is purely an opinion. There's nothing objectively wrong with using shareable energy to upgrade yourself. It actually makes the trade-offs a deeper part of the meta, as you need to make a choice. I just don't feel that it's implemented very well. If I had to guess, I'd say that if they increased the power of the perks, or decreased the cost, this shared energy aspect wouldn't really be an issue. Right now, it's only an issue because people are using shared energy to purchase stuff that clearly isn't worth it. If the perks were actually worth the cost, then I'd be fine with my teammates upgrading themselves over helping the team. But let's look at an alternative. How would I personally want it to work? I would propose that we have a system of perk points or something. These are separate from power and are only spent on upgrading perks. Each perk would cost one point to upgrade, no matter what level it is. How would these points be awarded? Well, that would depend on how many points TC thinks people should end with. If there was something like 1 point every 2 waves, you would end with 24 possible points. That's enough to max out 2 of your perks and go halfway on a third one. Or maybe you split it evenly and reach level 6 on all 4 of them. Perhaps TC wants to go a route where they would net all 40 total points by wave 40 or 45, so everyone can max out all of their points by the end. Personally, I wouldn't want that as it takes away from the risk of not upgrading some of them. So ideally, I like the one point every two waves idea, and then maybe give some bonus points for various things, like if nobody dies during a boss wave or a mini boss wave, you get two extra points or something. This would mean that at minimum, you'd end with 24 points, but they could do something to make it that if you perform well, you can end with closer to 40 and maxing stuff out. What do you think of this system? Well, let's go in and recap my thoughts here. For power taps, they're a nice concept. I just feel that removing the RNG aspects of them would make them much more practical. Bonus objectives would be nice to have again, but in a more impactful way. And perks? Well, I just feel that they should be removed. But assuming that's not happening, they basically should be reworked, or at least change something to better reflect the cost. The last big topic left to discuss in this series is that of the class locked characters. Tune in tomorrow where I'm going to give my thoughts on this controversial topic. As always, if you think we earned it, go ahead and drop this a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.